Man, when John and I started the Dadville podcast, we had no idea what we were doing. <laughs> I mean, zero idea. <laughs> That was till we found Anchor. Exactly. Anchor is a free service that will help you build and distribute your podcast. It's so easy it allows you to record and edit your podcast right on your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so that you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. That's right. And they'll help you make more money on your podcast with no minimum listenership. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hey everybody, it's me, Dave, one half of Dadville. Now, I've been a singer-songwriter for the last 20 years or so, but about 10 years ago, my dear friend and manager at the time pushed me to try to start doing some stand-up shows. If you've been to any of my live music shows, you know I'm chatty and love to tell stories and jokes, so it made sense. So, I was just dumb enough to try it. Since then, I've done about 30 or so stand-up shows, and that means no guitar, just me and the mic and my funnies. (laughs) About four years ago, I did a stand-up show here in Nashville at City Winery, and we recorded the show and that show is now an album called It's Hard Being an Idiot and is available on Spotify, Apple Music and everywhere you listen to music and comedy. To celebrate the release of the album I thought it would be fun to do some interviews with some of my favorite stand-up comedians to talk about not just being funny but being professionally funny. This episode I have the ruthlessly and mercilessly funny Mike Goodwin I, I I can say 100% sure I've never laughed this hard on a podcast. I, I, I could not get it together. I, I, I In fact, I think it was so bad I won't be able to listen to this episode because I was laughing so hard. Like, I think if you do the word count on this, I might have said like 15 things. I was just... My gracious, Mike. He is so funny. We met um, Dadville. Me and John went out and did an event with Andy Downs, and Mike was out on the tour, on the whole tour opening, and he just slayed it that night. I realized, we talk about this, that I recognized him from Facebook, um, little ads that pop up, and and, uh, and I remember him being hysterical and watching all of those, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's the same guy. He is 100% as funny and warm and wonderful off stage as, as he is on. We talk about that some. Um, I talk about this, too. I I think his stand-up bits are a lot like songs. Like he understands so well, like hooks, like moments that kind of make the joke work, and something that a little hook you take away from every bit of his. It's really incredible how how uh, how funny and how much he understands that whole thing. Um, he's also just a huge man, which is really intimidating and, and sort of wonderful. It's like watching a su- superhero be funny, which makes me laugh. But he talks about how that actually doesn't help him every time he gets in front of a new crowd, which I think is a very genius. Uh, thing to uh, to understand about yourself, but I, I I I like this guy so much. Like he's somebody that I really consider a friend, and I hope to hang out more with. And so I'm thrilled you guys get to hear this interview because I, I've, I've never laughed this hard in an interview. He just had me in the giggle box. So without any further ado, here is my conversation with Mike Goodwin. Let's get it jumping. That's the coolest thing. I can never say something that cool and sound as convincing as you just did. Uh, folks, I am thrilled to be here with one of the funniest people I know. Um, and that's coming in hot, but Mike, I mean that. Uh, Mike Goodwin, who I think... So so we we met formally um, when we were both out with Annie Downs. Me and John were out with Dadville. And you were doing... Uh, you were opening the shows up with, uh, with stand-up and... I mean, John and I watched side stage and we kept hitting each other in the side, which I don't know if there's like a better <laughs> response than when something's making you laugh and you just, and you can't, but so you can't be loud. So you're just hitting your friend and you're both like, we're covering our mouths laughing. But it was so funny. And you know what's, what I told you that night when we were on the bus um, that was crazy is I had, the whole time, like I'm terrible with names, but I am prodigiously good with faces. Like, right. I mean, and yours isn't easy to forget. I mean, you have your. That's kid a up great and, word, prodigious. Yeah, that's prodi- right. Come on, we, we got, hey, shout <laughs> out. I should end now. I'm going to end on a compliment. Thank you guys for listening. It's been fun. We've had a blast. <laughs> um, get some merch at the door. Um, no, but but uh, you know, I just don't forget faces. And we met on the bus, and I I mean, dude, my brain was like, why do I know? Mike's I mean, I'm running, I'm running, and when you started going into some of the bits, I was like, oh my gosh, he popped up on my Facebook feed. And I watched and cackled laughing, I think at the dry bar thing. It right, was one the of the dry, dry bar, bar right, things. Right. Um, so it was so fun seeing you do your thing. But dude, you are, I, I spent, you know, it's been fun getting ready for these things because I just sit and listen to comedy. I mean, it's like the best thing ever 
Because, you know, like my prep work for these interviews has been just watching y'all be funny. And it just it puts me in the best moods. But, I mean, you are, you're, we're going to get to that. You are ruthless. That's what I'm going to call you. Just like you are, you're an assassin, man. Like you, you start going and it's just, I just feel bad for people in the audience. I'm like, y'all about to get it. And you don't even know. So, so, so tell me this. So where'd you grow up? Where are you from? So I'm from Camden, South Carolina, small town in South yep. Carolina. Uh, grew up, born and raised in the south you know so I, yeah. I the oldest of three and i uh after i grew up i moved and joined the military so that was kind of like my my coming to adulthood or coming mm, to life type that's story. a serious coming to adulthood too right. right that's like that's like not my coming to adulthood. <laughs> my coming to go was going to college and like being late for class yours is like you oh, know man. somebody screaming at you with a funny look ahead on <laughs> What's going on with these hats? <laughs> Could y'all take these hats off? Those are very intimidating hats. Those, are so, those hats alone, those are scary hats. <laughs> What's going on with these hats? You didn't even see that hat like in public until for real showed up or whatever. But you're like, what are these hats that you're wearing? Y'all already intimidating people. But then you put that... <laughs> You put that brown hat on your head. <laughs> oh, dear mother. You already got me in the Google box. We're not three minutes in this thing. Good Lord. Oh, Those hats, man. That man. Me Those hats. <laughs> I'm going to start laughing at like It's like, like a superpower, tonight. man. Those hats. You just look at the drill sign. They look, they look like regular people. And then they put on their hat. And it's like, oh, that's a they cold assassin right there. Don't mess with this guy. <laughs> oh I don't care who puts the hat on, man. It could be the most <laughs> docile. Yeah. He puts it. It's like over seconds. At first, you're like, I think I could take that guy. I get this and guy. And then he puts that hat on, and oh, you're like, no, man. No. <laughs> no. No. Oh, I got to get out of here. The next I got to get out of here. First <laughs> get guy get gets his here. hands on me. <laughs> so, so tell me this. I mean, so growing up in South Carolina, I'm so fascinated. I've asked all the guests this. Like, uh, uh, do you know you're funny growing up? Like what? What? It, it, like, are you in your family and you kind of know? Like, I, I got it, man. I, if it gets tense in here, I can I can loosen it up. Or you, is that something you come to later in life? Like, how do you start knowing that? That's what I recognize. That's where my funny came from. My arguments, my parents. You know that wow. my parents used to have. I mean, very volatile, very consistent. Drag out. Yeah, physical at times. Oh wow! And I'm the oldest of three, and I can remember I was about seven. I was about seven years old and I could feel the tension. And you knew you never knew when an argument would take place. Like it just yeah. was so spontaneous. And I remember my mother would, you know, same kind of rhythm. They'd be you're arguing in their room. They'd tell us to either go in our rooms or close our doors or whatever. But they were so loud. We had we didn't have a big house. Everybody yeah, was kind of yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So after, you know, whenever it would come to a conclusion, when it wasn't physical, it would basically my dad would would just be in the room. My mom would leave and start like go to the kitchen and prepare, start fixing dinner. If it was physical, he would like get out of the house. Like he had to get out wow. of the house. And so I remember my mom went to the kitchen to prepare dinner. And I'm the oldest of a, a, a younger brother and sister. And I could just feel a tension. It was just mm. such a tense, uncomfortable feeling in the house and I just knew that if I made my mom laugh mm. that would at least alleviate some of the tension right, right. so mm. I did some silly thing and she laughed and it got to the point like I knew I was really funny when my dad would like yell from the back like what's all that noise what are y'all doing up there and I <laughs> Like I was like killing my my brothers and my sister and my mom, so I was like, oh, but I didn't oh. think of that was like a stand up funny. I just thought that was life providing me with an opportunity to like bring some levity to a situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And is that something where she now did your relationship with her change in that moment? Like, is she now looking at you like, oh, okay, now you? Because I'll tell you, my mom and I, like, I had ways that she knew she'd be like, please don't, because I'd be like. I, I can get you like in church. I had this one move I would do and I just, and I knew if I started doing it, she'd be, she'd be like, 
pinching me and like laughing and looking down. And so I had the ultimate sort of trump card. Is it like did that happen with y'all where you where you kind of knew like okay I know what's going to get mama. I well I'm always I'm a smart mouth person and my mm-hmm. mom's very gullible so she's so <laughs> that's easy. dangerous. She's so oh <laughs> she's so easy. Yeah, it, it's 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 ridiculously easy. Yeah. And I do it now. It's automatic. And then one thing I was a little frustrated. I saw my my daughter do it. I was like, oh, okay. Now we got to cut this out. Like, you don't have those, you don't have those privileges. Because my mom will say, "Is it cold outside?" I'll have on a trench coat, and she'll be like, "Is it cold outside?" I'm like, "No, nah, man. It's a hundred degrees." <laughs> just and I got on muff. I got on ear muff. I got on <laughs> gloves. I got a scarf. <laughs> I'm like, man, it's burning up out there. <laughs> She's getting some reps in, mom. I, I just follow her down, and she takes you there. She like throws. She's got your my mom constantly throwing alley oops. She's constantly <laughs> giving me material just to dunk on Chris her. Chris Paul. She's, She's just Chris throwing Paul it up there. there. <laughs> ah, I, I can't Griffin. refuse the dunks. I gotta take them. Speaking of slam dunks, today's episode is brought to you by the fabulous people over at Grip6. Grip6 is a USA-based company that manufactures and distributes all their products in-house right here on American soil. Grip6 takes great pride, as they should, in being USA-made, and the quality of their innovative and minimalist products really speak for themselves. Hey, who's been thinking about the holidays, huh? That's me. (laughs) I've got my hand up. I see you, too. Back there, Deborah. You can put that hand down. It's a time of the year where Christmas really starts to creep up on me, at least, and I'm I'm assuming probably you guys and gals too. If you're looking for the perfect gift for that smart, practical, and of course special someone in your life, look no further than the Grip6 Men's Classic Belt Pack. Grip6 belts, and all other products for that matter, always come with an unlimited lifetime warranty. That's right, unlimited lifetime warranty. The special Grip6 A3 technology guaranteeing T protects against any malfunction, accident, or possible wear and tear. The Grip6 Men's Class Belt Pack comes with nine total belt combos. That's nine total belt combos and includes three class buckles and three strap colors. And you can't forget William Shatner and the Blue Origin team. That's that's pretty good, right? <laughs> Sounds sort of like him. Even wore these belts into space. That's right, space, like Space Jam, where Michael Jordan and now LeBron James have battled it out with the... Hey, I'm getting off topic. That's just how cool Grip6's technology and design is. Not only do Grip6 belts look cool, they're extremely comfortable and will never pinch your gut unlike your grandmother when you're eating there for Thanksgiving. Head over to Grip6.com today to shop for a loved one or even for yourself and check out all the amazing products they have to offer. Hey, if it's good enough for William Shatner, it's good enough for me. Oh my gosh. That is, I, I, I love that. It, it is crazy to me. Like that's something that I'm so fascinated with humor in, in how, I mean, this, this is probably a really uh, obvious thing to say, but it's something I get more obsessed with the older I get is like humor really does have this incredible way of changing the feel of a, of a place or a room. It does. And I think a lot of kids, uh, a lot of people who are funny later in life, sort of, there's a real consistency in seeing that they, that, that they figured out, oh, wait a second, that, that I can sort of diffuse something. Or I remember I was talking to someone about this earlier, like it, it got bullies off them. Like they knew like, if I can be funny, like, I think I think actually that's what Destin was talking about. Like he figured out like he could t- and, and they were like, "Hey man, like okay, just don't do that. Just I'm, leave me alone. I'll like like me. don't yeah, bother." Like- <laughs> yeah, same thing. I, I, I have a, I have a bus story. Ninth grade, it guys popping me in the back of the head, and I was like, "Hey man, I gotta I gotta do something." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I just like roasted the whole <laughs> back row. You got. It. You but the got problem, it. the problem in the black community. <laughs> Is they want to fight you after you start roasting. <laughs> yes. So, so, so what did you do? <laughs> so what did then, you do? So that's what I had to like, I had to like, I had to like meet the moment of, oh, you want to fight? You want to fight? Not wanting to fight. I had no <laughs> desire <laughs> to fight. Hoping someone else would say, leave the little dude alone, man. <laughs> like some of his peers would say, oh. hey, man. Stop messing with this ninth grader. You're a senior in high school. Oh, Leave it him was alone. that. It was that. So he yeah. was like, he was big, and obviously you were not far that. more. Yeah, and I was. There, I was gonna get plummeted out there. It's yeah, like, yeah. hey man, somebody step in. But I had to <laughs> save face. You had, had to, to do it. You had, I to, had do to do it. To say, hey man, if you want to fight, hey man, you pushed me to this point. You did this. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah You yeah, bothered yeah. me. 
Yeah. So after I made it through that, yeah, people yeah. they left me alone, right? They knew, yeah, they knew. It, it, it really you. is. It, it really is a thing. Like it's a legitimate <laughs> weapon. It is. Like if if you know how to use it, man. And, and what's so funny again is here and again. I, I, it's been a month now, but I think that's when talking about like the guy came to him and literally said like, "Hey, we'll make a deal. Just don't do that." <laughs> Like it is and so I'll leave you alone, right? <laughs> I'll leave you alone. No, <laughs> you know. In my neighborhood, they went. The guy wouldn't have done yeah, that. The they, guy. Hey man, we got to fight now. Yeah, this yeah. is fighting time. <laughs> <laughs> you should have took the jokes. <laughs> that was the easy way. <laughs> but the thing that's hard for me is, I mean, you are an enormous human being. Now, so I, just, I, I wasn't I just, being. I was okay, a little but, dude. But I just imagine like a scaled down version of huge that, that, Mike. That, that, that wasn't it. That, that wasn't, wasn't it. it. I didn't okay. get that until I joined the army. I was a very. Oh, for real? Yeah, I was a slim guy. God, I mean, you are. I just think of you as a massive no. individual. Now, when I went to the army, I was like, my parents were not feeding me. Like, I just immediately. Oh, just like. Became off. a linebacker. It was like, what? <laughs> you, just, you just hadn't had food. And I couldn't keep a shirt on either. I was like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> just walking around all hey, the time. I'm not familiar with a body like this. What is this? These muscles? <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to put a shirt on this? No, man. This is for the world. This is a community service right here. This, this, this benefits society to see this. <laughs> this is blessing people, man. Yeah. I'm out here for the community. You can't That's cover true. this up. You can't hide your candlestick. <laughs> you can't put it under a bushel. I'm going to let it shine. Dave, <laughs> these muscles of mine, I'm going to let them shine. <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> it was your ministry. But it was like my just... <laughs> ministry. This, the cross I have to bear. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, the cross that you had to bear. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Ali, you. Ali, you. Ali there it is, me and your mom, man. <laughs> uh, we know it. We know it. We know uh, it. Oh my gosh! So, so uh, tell me this. This is what's so interesting is obviously you don't go to the army if you want to be a comedian, right? <laughs> Clearly. So, so that's when, the place this, you should not yeah, go. <laughs> yeah, that's the last place you should go. <laughs> you shouldn't go to basic. That's yeah. Not it's not for, a well-worn path, no, you know. Like no, I did. Got it. <laughs> so tell me, and this is a consistency with both you, Angela, and then you know with Dustin. Both of them have the same thing where. Nobody set out to be a comedian and everybody kind of gets into it a little later. Like, you know, like you would think you knew at 20, oh, I'm moving to LA, I'm moving to New York, I'm doing my thing. So, so when is that moment? I'm so fascinated by this with each of y'all. Like, when is that moment where you're like, okay, well, hold on now. Maybe, maybe this is more than me just making my mom laugh and my friends think I'm fine. Right. When is that moment? I'm an adult. I'm in graduate school. Like, I'm, my, my goal basically was to become a president of a university. I think at the long term, if you were to talk to like 25-year-old Mike, I would have wanted to be a president. Dr. Goodwin, president yeah. of some liberal arts institution. I worked my way up from working in student affairs, dean of yeah. students, ultimately becoming the president of an organization. That was, that was kind of my goal. That was it. I'm at church. We had a comedian by the name of Akintunde. He still goes there. Um, he had given his life to the Lord. So he was a secular guy doing shows for probably, man, this guy was on the road at that point for probably 15 years. Dang. And was doing it kind of road dog style. Like, okay. You yeah. know, going out, Getting doing it. the yeah, clubs, yeah. Yep. you know, not really having prominence and, and recognition to that degree. But he, he was getting success because the what brought him to Columbia was a job on the radio as kind of the comedic relief. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So he came, to, he moved to the city I live in and, you know, had an experience with God on the road and, and, and found our church. So we're serving together in the media ministry. We're just, I'm on the camera, he's on the mixer, and I would just run ideas. I would think about things or say things to him. And he let me do that for a while. Like, it, it went on maybe 30 days or so. He would just kind of wow. laugh and be like, oh, that's, yeah, that's good, that's funny. Then there were even sometimes we get into like, 
roasting battles amongst the group. It would be a mm-hmm, group. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I would be the last one standing. I would ultimately get annihilated. But I would be the last one <laughs> ultimately, kind of in the ring. Yeah, I, at, at the end of the day. <laughs> he would Thanos me at some point. <laughs> but I, I could fight. Like, I could stay in there. <laughs> He, I just imagine him on the side too, like grinning. Okay, that was yeah. good. And you're just, you're just doing it. Just, and he's like, okay. And then finally, he just snaps, right. and you're and laying I'm done. on the ground. I'm yeah. over. But it, but it's, it's at least four or five of us to to start. Like so, <laughs> those guys will get knocked out pretty quickly. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, man, I'm still in, the, I'm still in the fray. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I remember I said something to him one day, and he was like, hey, man, this is some really good material. He said, either I'm gonna do this material and not give you any money, or you're gonna go up. And do this material. That was basically the ultimatum. And I was like, I guess I need to do material. I, and he was like, I'm going to give you an opportunity to open for me. And I did that at a New Year's Eve service. We had a, a, a watch night service at our church. It was kind of a surprise. So I'm, people knew me. They knew I was mm-hmm. funny, but they, mm-hmm. didn't, they didn't know I was going to do stand-up. Right, right. So I came out and did seven minutes standing ovation. I mean, it was like if you were shooting Dang. a movie, this was the perfect movie set. Like all oh, my dreams are, are are made in the your manifestation, right? Right, right. Standing ovation. Oh my god, the best I've ever seen. Then I bombed for the next two years. I was awful. Wait, what? What, what do you mean you were awful? Bombed. Like so, I did that seven minutes, and then I started right. getting shows, and I was mm-hmm. bombing. How? Because I was not a comedian. I was a guy that went and did some comedy because a buddy said, you're funny. Uh huh. So I was up there for Mike. I went up there for the audience. And so oh. Yeah, tell me about no that. Connection. What does that mean? That's a really fascinating thought. Tell me about so that. So I was more enamored with doing comedy than actually entertaining the audience. Like the audience mm. was there as a secondary <laughs> All you saw was all you saw was you in the audience at the top of of their heads. Like I didn't even see them because I didn't look at them. I was looking at the top of their heads. I was Mm. not talking to people. I was not making eye contact. So so you were? Did it feel more like a monologue? Yeah, I felt like I was a robot as it relates to my movement, but I felt like the words were good. Like I felt like. Mm. Y'all should like these words as much as I like these words. Right, right. Because these are good words. <laughs> but <laughs> you say words to people. You don't just say yeah. words to yourself. <laughs> yeah. I so, did a lot in middle school, but that's a whole other story. That's a whole other story. So, thing. yeah, I wasn't talking. I was talking at them. I was talking mm. in the same room that they were mm. in. But I was talking. I was making myself laugh. Like, I was up there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it wasn't just the comedy. I just was on this type of like, look at me. You yeah, know? yeah, and, yeah. And I've yeah, been wearing the bow tie really since my second time on stage. Like that was one of the things. I had a good understanding of marketing and mm-hmm. standing out mm-hmm, from the mm-hmm, crowd. Mm-hmm. So I recognized, oh, it's a lot of people that do comedy. Right. For me to stand out, I should just be who I am. And I was a guy that, you know, was dress well, wore yeah. suits. I said, yeah. just be myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was up here like this arrogant version of myself with nothing to be arrogant about. So let's say like in my regular life, I had been in the military. I had gone to graduate school. I had a family. I had accomplished things. Mm-hmm. Comedically, I accomplished nothing. Like I've, right. I have no nothing to to present to you like oh man i've really honed this craft i've worked on this thing and i'm gonna present it to you i just was up there on like a version of i'm a good dude i've been doing a lot of stuff with my life <laughs> and now i'm doing comedy and it should all fall in place like everything else and the audience was like we don't even know you like yeah and isn't you're really it, not that funny <laughs> isn't it funny that that is a thing that, you know that's the thing about comedy because, because you know, d- having done some stand-up shows, people ask me all the time, like, "What's the difference between music and comedy?" I've talked about this on this podcast, but like, Sting could walk into a, a coffee shop, let's say in New York, at 10 p.m. They're about to shut down. Everybody sees him. It's been an open mic, and he can sit down and say, "I'm gonna play a new song," and everybody's like, "Holy cow, it's Sting!" Right? It can be the worst song he's ever written. 
literally like un, he, you know but him playing guitar and singing is still redemptive because it's his voice it's right. his guitar playing right. Be the, right literally he can be singing about like you know circus animals and still right. you're gonna be like I mean, he can sing his abc guys, yeah it's terrible <laughs> but but still it's saying comedy isn't redemptive if it's not funny like you and that's that i learned that from that seinfeld you know comedian movie was like this is the funniest guy in the world at the time and he would get up and he was, and if he's not funny it's not just not funny it makes people mad right because they are <laughs> he, he is not deli- so it's literally the opposite of what he is trying to do is being done and so it's funny to hear you say it because you can't i think people you know that haven't ever done that it's hard to understand how like when you bomb in comedy it's not like a bad night on the road for me i'm not like oh my guitar was out of tune my bass player was not i couldn't man i sang out of tune i couldn't it's uh, you know it's like it wasn't great like you bomb in comedy it's like like it's maybe the worst moment of your life <laughs> it just feels like because there's nothing there's no cleanup there's no like but at least he had cool clothes right. or he seems like a nice guy it's like no nah, man i don't like that guy i don't like you at all you've <laughs> wasted 20 minutes of i can't get that 20 minutes yeah back. and i expected one thing and you und and you made I expected me expected a seven opposite. and you brought me a three <laughs> yeah and i, and I hate you, you. <laughs> I don't like your suit. Why are you so yeah. dressed up? You should have been in t-shirt and jeans to do what you just did. Yeah, yeah. You don't deserve that suit. You should be in some so, flip flops. So when did you when did you realize? Oh, I'm doing this wrong. Like how? Because that that's a pretty that's a pretty heady thing to understand. To go, oh, I'm not talking to them. I'm I'm talking at them. If I'm even doing like when did that? That had to be a pretty you know Ebenezer moment in your life, right? It was. It was. It, it there was a it was a few things that happened. So. The first thing, Akintunde basically took me and two other people with him on the road pretty quickly mm. after I started. So it was sort of like an in- internship or an apprenticeship. Wow. So wow. if he had a show, it was pretty much an open invitation to come and do some time. And even if wow. you don't do time, you could have sold merch at the table or yeah. you could have watched the show. Like, just learning. It's just an open invitation. So if I have something... I expect y'all to be there. I mean, that's kind of wow. was the wow the vibe. So the two other guys, they were more competitive with one another because they literally started similar around the same time. They thought I was further along than they were. So they thought, oh, wow. they thought like me and Akintunde were friends, which we were friendly, but we were not friends at that right, moment. We right, went to the same right. church. Right. He said, hey, man, you need to get on stage to do comedy. But he wasn't giving me information right 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 separate right. from that right so those two guys would go like one of the guys he's just i mean if i have a picture of them in my in my office at the house one of them he's a naturally funny like he's you see him you yeah, want to yeah, laugh yeah 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 he's yeah, charismatic yeah. Yeah. yes yes on his worst night I, I explain it like this on his worst night he's an eight on his wow. worst night wow if he's just up there he's at least an eight yeah. When he's killing it, he's amazing, right? Wow. So the way that the lineup went, then the other guy, he was at worst a six. Okay. But he was consistently a six and a seven. Like he was consistently gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. six to seven. Sometimes he would hit nine, ten, but he would be consistently at that seven, six, high six, probably seven. Okay. Me, I fluctuated from four <laughs> To eight, to six, to three, to five. Like, there was no telling. Like, it would right, depend right. on how the audience would perceive me. Right, right. How my ego was feeling that day. Like, it, it was yeah. so much yeah, yeah. volatility with me. But the way that the lineup was. <laughs> volatility. <That's laughs> it was <hysterical. laughs> It was the seven guy. Then it was the nine guy. Then it was me. And then it was Akatunde. So that was the lineup. So regardless of what happened before Akatunde, he could just come and do cleanup. Like all that we yeah, did yeah, yeah. was bonus. Like no one was ever mad right. at us. If, if you know, yeah, they, yeah. they probably yeah, wouldn't yeah. speak at the end of the night. They were like, oh, right. you funny. Uh yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. that kind of thing, people would walk by me and shake the other guys' hands and be like, oh, oh man, yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. standing there like <laughs> So that was happening. So I'm, and, I'm, and they were competitive. Like they were like, "Oh, I'm gonna get you tonight." And I didn't know this was happening. So they were like, upping one another. They were kind of ironing, sharpening iron against each other. So they right. were constantly improving. 
And then the other thing that really brought it to home for me, I was the funniest comedian in the car on the way to the show. So mm. I used to, I mean, I used to be in the, I used to be killing <laughs> in the car. I, Cause sometimes it would be us, but then we'll have like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. a road manager person, yeah, promoter. There yeah, might yeah. some be a, like a, a gospel rapper might have been on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would slay in yeah, the car, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, murder. And I used to always think, how can I get this guy from the car to yeah. the stage? Yeah. I legitimately yeah, yeah, yeah. was yeah. like, I should have a car on stage and do a set. That's like <laughs> I felt <laughs> that. <laughs> like, I should just sit in a car. Can I you imagine I, if that was your felt, bit? I just felt a, a tremendous, tremendously better because I did that my whole life. I rode around yeah, my friends yeah, yeah, yes. being yeah. funny. Yeah. But and yeah, so sitting on stage so, in a car so what, would be what was the diff, what, what did you find? Like, So what was that bridge? When was, what was the thing that went, oh, that's how I do that. That's what I'm not doing or whatever. What happened was, so we would do these things, but then you'll have one-offs. So I, yeah, I was still, yeah. I was getting... Like yeah. shows that I couldn't do. Or then people would see me somewhere and be like, hey, can you come do this thing? So I would get these one-offs. And they would go relatively well. And I was like, wait a minute. When I'm by myself, I think I'm more focused on who I'm talking to because they brought me in versus yeah. when I'm with the group. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of yeah. like I'm hanging out with some dudes. Right. So I'm not thinking about the audience to the degree that I am when somebody's saying, hey, right, you know, right. you're going to be going up after this. And so I just remember like talking to God one time and asking like, what is like, I legitimately was like, why is this not working? It was just wow. like, uh, if you go to the driving range and you get 50 balls in a bucket and you, hmm. and you hit, you, you shake 49 of them and then you hit one. Yeah. I was like, I know I've hit one straight. So why hmm. can't I hit these other 49 straight? Wow. And God was like, you are full of pride. Like you up <laughs> You're there. like, no, that's not. I, I'm going to keep listening. I heard the first one. Let's keep going. I like I like where this is going. What else you got? You're full <laughs> of yourself. Like he was just like, you're haughty. You're full of you. Like you have, you're not looking at the audience. I mean, it was just like, mm. it ran, He, it, you know, it just ran down. Like you aren't talking to them. Mm. You're, you, you're, you're up there for you. Jeez, Louise. And when I made that switch, I, I and I really remember. Jeez, what a profound moment when that happened. And the other thing that happened too, they knew, they knew that. Hey, man, once Mike figures this out, yeah, he's gonna be a problem. Like they <laughs> knew they was. <laughs> <laughs> it's like watching a guy in practice and watching him in the game. It's like I knew you were about to say that. I know exactly what you mean. I know exactly what it's you like, mean. It's like, why does he do this in the game? Yeah, yeah. And then you he, you you see the pros game is like, well, we're not surprised. He's been doing this. Yeah, the, yeah, right, right. On right, the scout right, team. Right. <laughs> Once he gets rid of the yips, he's gonna be a, a problem. Yeah. And yeah. that's exactly what happened. And then it happened. And 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 because it is true, isn't it? It's like you're you're <clears throat> I think all of this stuff and, and what you said, man, first of all. You're talking about the 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 God telling you got to get rid of your pride. That uh, you're just doing a ministry right now, even with your shirt on, which means like me. <laughs> but I think like, but I think the the thing that's so powerful about that is it really is all a service industry. Like I mean, as much as you want to be funny and make yourself laugh, or I want to write songs I like, ultimately I really want to see people resonate with what I'm creating. Right. Because that's 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 all it's about. Like it, 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 to your point, and and you've done this, which is so rewarding because you've seen it not work. Like I've seen it not work. Where you write a song, you you do a show where you're kind of like, well, that's how you do that. And then they're like, I don't think we'll ever have you back. And you're like, oh, so you don't like amazing things, is what you're telling me, you know? But you really do realize like this isn't any good if it doesn't matter to other people. If it if it's not serving them in some way. And then this is wasted time. It doesn't matter how good it is. Right. And even more problematic is when people know, can see you, to your point, where they're going like, oh, he, he's, I, yeah, I'm not in on this guy. He's, he's not he's, here for me. Like, he, Yeah, he's not here for me. That's exactly right. <laughs> that's exactly yeah. right. So that's a really beautiful point. And you can feel that <clears throat> in any kind of entertainment on stage when, and I think the crowd, you know, the crowd really responds when they see you giving and, and you're thinking about them and you're trying to go, hey, everybody having a good, okay, good, 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 good. Because they're like, oh man, I'm with this guy. The crowd so is wanna, savvy. They're very they, savvy. Dude, it, so savvy. They're very, and they're far more intelligent than we give them credit. I, yes. I know I did. Like I, I yes. came in like, oh, I need to dumb down. My, like, dude, who, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, why, yeah. Why are you so, 
yeah. all encompassing now. That well, you and you know what? The they're, they're almost, I'm going to use this word again, but I think people, especially as spectators, are prodigiously smart. They may not know. Just like the way people take stuff, the way we all take stuff in, our ability to make judgments around that stuff is crazy. It's amazing. The way our brains work. Now, our ability to do something well, that's a whole other thing, but... That, that, you know, as a as a crowd participant, it's crazy how much I don't I don't know what is happening in me, but I can tell you very if I'm having a good time or not. Right, now, and now, they'll know if you're having a good time because they'll yes. say, "Man, you look like you were having so much fun up there." <clears throat> That's it, man. That's it to me. It's like One, you can this really... is thing. This is the thing my wife does now because this was the real thing. This was the crux of what got me moving in the right direction. She texts me before every show, "Have a blast and bless mm. the people." That's oh, what, come on, man. That's, that's it. What, she that's texts it. me every show. That's the, that's the walking out, hit the hit the sign on the way out. That's you know? it. That's so if it. I do that's, those two things. that's Because that's all you got. That is all you got. If it doesn't work after that, if that's that's not your problem anymore. That's that's right. God's thing and he's doing his thing. Right. So I want to back up for a second because you said something that I've asked everybody on this podcast. This, and I would love to hear you talk about this. You said this so well a minute ago that he's that you were talking about the the nine right the guy right, that was the right. nine. like he's just a funny guy I, can you can you work out for me because i i don't know how to sort of enunciate this clearly this idea but i i really do i always think about comedians and or i think about really people but it breaks down into comedians too funny people in two ways i tend to think of people like that are funny now you in, in this this is what you kind of said like people like you put them i think you're like this but but i think about like I was talking to Dustin about this, like Sinbad to me, right? Right. You put Sinbad at a funeral home. In a, he's going to make people laugh in a corner just because he, he's just funny, right? And and, and you and I've never thought about this, but but it's true. Like his mannerisms, his facial expressions, he's just a good story. To, like he's going to make you laugh. And then there's other people who I think are hysterical on stage, but that's not their vibe. Like real real time, that's not like who they are. You know. That's not kind of how they roll, right? You know, like, right. but but both can be just as funny on stage. Right. And so right. I, I, you said it well, like, I really do think there's such a thing as people who are just funny. Like, they can be on a stage or in a cafeteria or, you know, at the church, but they're just going to be funny. They're just funny people. Right. And then there's people who I think can, like, it's almost like they're funny people and then there's people who can be funny. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Does yeah, that yeah. that sense? No, it makes a lot of sense. It's like the class clown versus who I was, the writer mm. for the class class. Yes, so you are the person great. that is yep. feeding the lines. Like, this person's the right, face. Right. This is the fearless, the good yeah. time, yeah. hey man, yeah. I'm a wild and crazy yeah. guy type of disposition. Yeah. Like, they, they have that type of energy. Yes. It yeah. flows out of them. And then there's us yeah. that sit back and more... Like, I used to think I was... a an extrovert, but I was really an introvert with extroverted activity that I know what to do with. Like the comedy was causing yes. me to be an extrovert. <laughs> like I'm truly an introvert, <laughs> but I had this. I, you I, really I, this I used to explain my comedy, my comedy to people. It was like before I started doing it on stage, I was like the kid that if you went to his house and they would bring out a toy and you're like, yo, I like that toy. And if they, they saw that you liked it, they were like, oh. Wait till you see the other toys I have. And so they go and one by one and just keep bringing toys into the the whole toy box is empty. Like, that's what I was doing with jokes. Like, you laugh one time. I was like, oh, oh, you like that, huh? Wait till you Rub hear this one. <laughs> oh, that was funny. You know, that that's the thing, man. I think that is what is so. You have so many skills. I really mean this. I think you've got all these things in your arsenal. Like I think about your quiver is just full of these. Because something that I feel like you really understand that is a really unique um, gift is is not just to your the marketing part of it. So like, what's your vibe? What's your look? You know, you come on stage, people. Are, oh yeah, that's the guy that does the. Okay, right. But but your your jokes are just so, and it makes sense as you say that about like, you know, you're bringing them out one at a time because it, it, watching watching your stand up and your sets online, boy, you got to be careful with that statement. I just realized sets <laughs> online is um is that um is that it's so eloquent and they're so concise, but they've all got hooks like. 
everything you do has got this it's un it's unbelievable like watching i kept watching and i'd seen half of them but then like found stuff i hadn't seen and i was like every single one of them you have a pretty innate ability it reminds me truth truthfully of songwriting it really does like you know you want your chorus to be the memorable thing and that's the name of the song and that's what people go i want to listen to that song and that's how the chorus goes and i could sing it and you know you think about uh, even just what you're not going to do. Like, you know, there's a, something in you that, that that's really innate. It sounds like that you go, okay, it can't just be funny. Like, what's my, what's the thing? Like, what's the, what do you put on the shirt and you sell it? Like, what's the thing that wow. when people, oh, yeah. you know, get up? And, and that's a really unique skill. Is that something that you sort of just had or did you learn that from people or, you know? Or is that's, that just I mean, the style you like? Well, first off, thank you. That's very eloquent. No one's ever called for comedy eloquent. That's <laughs> <laughs> Your wife sent me a text and said, "Listen, he just he said a bad day. Just lift him All right. up." Right, <laughs> I appreciate it. So, I, similar to let's think about a guy, and, and I love sports analogies and all, mm-hmm. all of these stuff. So you can't be your size my... and not like sports. <laughs> <analogies>, <laughs> <by the way. laughs> I don't want to hear you talking about like financial right now. I'm gonna get really uninterested. Really You're like, ah, oh, what is this? You're like, what? You know, we so think about the NASDAQ. The fiduciary, yeah, the fiduciary. Uh, <laughs> what? Yes, 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 yes. So, like Vince Carter, right? So, when Vince Carter came into the league, he was the dunking expert. Like, he just flew oh, through yeah. the air. He's dunk, he's explosive. But as you watched mm-hmm. his career, he stayed around because he became a jump shooter. He, play, you know, played yeah. defense. He started acquiring other skills and so that's what i figured out i always knew that the words were important i said i know mm-hmm. i get the fact that words you know what you say matter but then i started understanding the performance part because when you know once i realized you know when i was like hey man your ego you're up there for you you're you're not doing this for the audience then i, I was like oh well so what does that look like so what i've been doing kind of worked so i had mm-hmm. a i had a piece that some of this stuff was working, and regardless if I was a jerk on on stage and if I didn't right, look at people, right, 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 I could get laughs with this stuff saying these right. things. Now it became okay. How do you deliver it? Like, what's your delivery? Mm. One of the things I've always known is my facial expression. Is all I'm always telling you things by the way I look. I just I'm yes, yes. Like yep. my eye, yep. like I'm yep. very yep. expressive when I don't say a thing. I don't say a word. Yep. Yeah, but if people look at me, <laughs> yeah. they're gonna laugh. Right, right. So I started understanding like my delivery and and how my body plays into it. But the, I think the thing that really moved the dial for me, I was at this play, and it was a it was strange play. It was a play about a small town, and basically they found out that one of the um, women in the community was a man. Like when she died, and the scene was there was a a bar and there was a hair salon. And they both were on stage, uh, but there was a moment where the men found out that at, you know at the I guess the the funeral home had to do their thing, mm-hmm. and it was like Miss Jones mm-hmm. is Mister Jones, Mister Jones. And so they told the folks at the bar, at the salon, at the salon, a saloon, at like what you know where the guys were hanging out. Yeah, they had to call to where the women were. And we all knew what was going to happen. But the longer he took to say something, it just became funnier. It was just like, yes. and I could that feel is genius. it. I could feel it sitting there. like, And he just held it and he held it and he held it. And, and I could just feel the, the laughter like bubbling. And I said, man, I got to do that on stage. I got to figure out how to do that. And so to your point about what you're not going to do, my jokes to me are very much rhythmic. I say things yes, in a beat. Yes, yes, Even yes. like the guys on Andy's tour, they like, they look at it like, okay, Mike said the same, but the beats of it, they were like, yeah, dude, you yeah. always hit the same yeah. marks. Yeah, because yeah. What you're not going to, like I say it away, like I say yeah. things yeah. in a particular rhythm, in a particular cadence, and it's sort of, I can't sing, I lost that ability when I when puberty hit, but <laughs> I had a beautiful but voice boy, I, we, as a young boy. They still talk about it. They still talk <laughs> about all, it. To this day. They still talk about it. <laughs> this little light of mine, that was my song. I, you, I mentioned it earlier. That was, <laughs> I would sing it. They would ask me. They would call for me. Young Michael, come. Saying this little light of mine, I would go. Young, young Bishop Hide Michael. Under, uh, no, 
I'm gonna. <laughs> but then when that when that fruit hit, I, yeah. <laughs> God was like, look, you're going to give up your voice, but you're going to get some packs. Yeah. Your voice is going to be very beneficial to you, but not for singing. But also, I'm going to give you just some traps for days. You're going to get some biceps. All right. It's one for one. One for one. I want that singing, though, man. Give me that singing back, Lord. I don't so. either. <laughs> but yeah, I really started like holding it like holding yeah, the yeah. punchline yeah so yeah they, i do i do experiment with like like be very make it uncomfortable like wait yeah wait okay so to your point with that this was another question i had do you do, like how how do you get that stuff down i mean you know everybody kind of has different answers but do you find yourself workshopping that stuff like at your at your house kind of or in your office like working it out you're walking around doing it or is that something you're like I'm just going to get on the road and as I, you know, like I'm on, as I'm doing shows, I'm like, I got to wait longer there. Or like, I like doing it this beat more because last night I did it that and it went better than tonight. Like, I think how, a how combination sort of, of it. Out? I think back in the day, like I couldn't go on the road and I couldn't do those things. So I had to do it at the house. Like, so there was me in the mirror running through it, running through it, running through it. And then one thing I, and I, I probably need to re bring it back. So I would, I would go through my set at home but then i would like freestyle like i'd go off on this little yes. tangent yes and that's what some of the gold would show up is yes like, yes i'm just kind of workshopping it and i don't do that enough now i, I do it on stage live like so something will happen and, you'll and just i'll go. sit in that moment and like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but that yeah so i I'm, I'm constantly that but that's what is difficult as you get Further along in your career, like the America's Got Talent thing, right? So I had two minutes. Yeah. In my That's muscle memory, minutes. yeah, I had two minutes to do this to do a set. But 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 like, yeah, but you know and, and how my long muscle that takes. memory, yeah, yeah, my muscle memory causes me to go. If I say this word, my body knows we're going this way. But in that type of scenario, you got to like tear everything down and rebuild it again because I can't do the thing. That I normally do because I don't have enough time. So I got to break right. up jokes. Right. So I got to like take a piece right. of that joke and a piece of this joke and a piece of it. I can't go here. I can't do that callback. I got to like say super. Yeah. yeah. Which is terrifying to me because if that my version of that music would be literally somebody going like, hey, you got two minutes with that song. And you're like, oh, OK, well, I can definitely do the first verse. I got to do the chorus. I just not do the bridge and make the. Yeah. OK. But then you're like, well, then. It isn't the same song. You're like, yeah, I know. But it's like, that's what you got, right? Right. Earlier in the episode, I had the privilege of talking to you guys about an awesome USA-based company called Grip6 and the incredible belts that they make. They not only specialize in minimalist and classic belts, but Grip6 also offers sleek and easy wallets as well. Grip6's wallets are engineered to be the quickest and most intuitive way to access and store your credit cards. The good people at Grip6 have created a wonderfully slim, low-profile wallet that is less than half an inch thick. Think about that. That thing is tiny. That's about as thin as a common smartphone, or an uncommon smartphone, or really just any smartphone. You must give the Grip6 wallet a try. I promise you won't miss your bulky, bulging, George Costanza folding leather wallet one bit. Grip6's wallets are made from space-grade aluminum. I've never said that in my life. Space-grade aluminum. And are built so tough, I would wager a healthy amount of money this will be the last wallet you'll ever need. Just like every single one of Grip6 products, their wallets and belts are all made right here in the US of A and come with a lifetime guarantee. So visit Grip6, that's G-R-I-P 6.com today to shop these awesome wallets, belts, socks, and more. That's Grip6, that's G-R-I-P 6.com for the most innovative products and awesome gifts. And that's the thing that's so fascinating too about when, you know, that's the thing that overwhelms me maybe the most about stand up is how somebody gives you a definitive amount of time as an opener, or even a closer. Like, you know, that was the thing. I did some shows and I mean, my wife, um, or no, my manager, uh, well, that's a weird Freudian slip, um, <laughs> told me at the time, he was like, man, you're just, no, Annie, that's right. No, Annie told me that because she said, you're 30 minutes too long on this because I was doing like an hour 15. And she's like, 
it's too long. It's everybody's tired. And cause right. I was thinking of it like music. I was like, we well, got to give them what I they pay do for. A whole, yeah. But like, it is such a physical experience that you do realize like, man, you got to keep these things. That was the other thing that my manager then also said is he's like, the stuff is funny. You don't have to riff as much as you think you do. Because I, and he's like, I promise the bits are funny. You've done them 10 times now. Just keep doing them. Right. And to your point about, but it is hard because then you'll find a little hoop and you're like, Oh, I want to chase that so bad. Oh, it sounds like they like it tonight. And sometimes they do. You know, but then you're like, shoot, how do I get back to where was right, it? Right, right. <laughs> what was the road back to that first? Track? That's the danger of it, like working new material. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. one night, I mean, that just recently happened to me. I did a show last Sunday and I riffed. I had this whole bit about basic training and I went mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I was like, that's good enough to be a thing. Yeah. So I tried to do it as a thing and I was like, oh, I don't know all the pieces of the thing. Like, <laughs> I thought I'd just say it. They would laugh, and then I'd kind of piece it together. <laughs> they didn't laugh. That, and I was like, was, oh, where am I going was, with this? Where am I, dude, that is, so the first show I ever did, this is probably 12 years ago. My manager was on me. He was like, we got to get you doing the stand-up stuff, because I kind of had bits, you know, from doing music. I'd kind of collected all these little bits. So we did, I mean, dude, I'd never done, I'd done two sets for my friends. So I did right. these private shows in Nashville. Only I could invite my friends. That was a deal I made. It was like 50 people a night and I know everybody. Right. So it's a safe space. So if I do this and it bombs, it's all, but did them both and everybody was really cool. They were like, hey, that was pretty funny. Like if you worked on this, make it work. So then I did it at this place called the Belcourt Theater, which is like 400, 500 people and it's right. sold out and it's all right. my fans. That's my third show, 500 people <laughs> and it's no music. It's just me and a mic. <laughs> And I remember so many times in the middle of a bit going, where, where does this, that was funny. That's the funny part, but I still got to land this. Like, cause people are like, well, so what happened then? I was like, uh, well then, you know, we ended up buying the puppy and taking it home. And they're like, oh, well that's not very funny. And I was like, oh God, you're right. It's not very funny. Like there was nothing more terrifying than in real time going, oh, I just passed the funny and everybody laughed, but I still got to finish this thought and going, oh yeah. So you have to think. Oh right! Oh, okay. and and to that point, there are times where you know, if I go into this joke and they're not laughing by this point, oh. it's not good. It's, it's not good. It's real we got bad. a long way to go to get out of here. <laughs> like, <laughs> we can't turn around anymore. We've is, gone too far. <laughs> if I like, there's a joke. I, I, what joke was that? Because there was a joke that I would have to get on the floor, so I would do do this thing. But I knew if people weren't laughing, I'm on the floor doing the joke. <laughs> it's not laughing. <laughs> then I got to get back up to no laughing. I mean, dude, isn't that so? It's so humbling. And it really is the closest I've been terrified on stage is in those moments and bits where I'm like, oh, God. Oh, gosh. Oh, I've got another minute. I'm out here. Like bit. we're here. Like yeah. I cannot do it out of this. At you. And I've found that for me, the the double down that can work is when you just call it what it is, and then you get everybody back. You're exactly. Like, you know, you're like, okay, folks. So sometimes people can be unfunny, and I just want to show you what that's like. And I'm like, oh, okay. And you're like, oh my god. But you got to be savvy enough to even get to that point yeah. because yeah, yeah. when you're there, your neck warm, like your physical. <laughs> You have condition of your body changes like the, uh, the chemistry oh um, my gosh it's so true you go up 10 degrees yeah, yeah hotter yeah, like yes, your body yes. instantly yes your mouth dries like yes, all the yes. saliva in your mouth begin, yeah. all the moisture in your body like the tear <laughs> ducts <laughs> All of it is very they just reclo- <laughs> relocate to your back right now your bottom back of your back it's freezing <laughs> your back is freezing but the rest of your body's hot. You shiver. You just shiver. <laughs> it is the cold that you can't oh. adjust. Like I can't oh take my, my t-shirt off because. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Well, you know, the, the, the other thing I think is so fascinating about your comedy is like uh, watching you at that crowd that night and then watching you online. It just feels like everybody really likes you. Like I know that sounds crazy. It maybe it does. Maybe like oh I know they do. But like <laughs> it's so fun because. I just feel like crowds are like, and in fact, it was actually fun reading the comments, man. Cause like yeah, everybody people, yeah, people are very generous. so kind. Yeah, They're like, yeah. I love this guy. He's clean. He's <laughs> funny. Like, oh man, this guy's the best. But that's such an affirming thing. You know what I mean? Cause it's like, that's got to feel like a win. I just feel like every time you do comedy, people are like, man, I want to go get dinner with that guy. Right. And, and you know, my thing is this, I'm a better person than I am a comedian. So, mm. and I'm at this stage in life where. What a great, what a great I'm comment. mature, right? Like, you know, if I would have got some of this stuff at 24, 25, 
I would have tore it. Like I would have messed it up. I would have mishandled it. I wouldn't have been as I wouldn't have stewarded it the way that I have. Yes, now. well said. And well said. I, and, I, and I've done a, a better job because of where I am in life, my yeah. experiences. So I'm often of the opinion like I wouldn't be the performer that I am had I not, you know, like taken the, the yeah. direction that I've taken. Yes. Yes. And I and I do want to come across like I do feel like what you see is what you get with me. I mean, there are some elements of my private life, you know, like mm-hmm, if you're my mm-hmm. friend, you know. Yeah. But for the most part, that guy on stage is not yes. very different. Yes, that's than great. the guy that's sitting on the bus after the yeah. show, or yeah. the guy that yeah. you work out with at the gym, or, right, or whatever right. the case may be. Right. Who uses my body to do your bench pressing? <laughs> Dave, you could just lay on my hands. Do. Is your wife here? Because she just lay, and I was just See, and that's a challenge too, like. Being in shape as a comedian, there's no benefits. Like I and I have to. Oh really, my gosh, I dude! Hold on, we have to stop for a second. That is such a genius thing to say. It's so true. Like you getting up there looking like you do doesn't help you. It's no bit. It kind of hurts me in some regard because it's like yeah, talk about that because so, that's so true. <laughs> there's a, so if I was a single man. It would be very good because women right. could say things. Right. And right. People could say, oh, look at his body. I'm a married right. man with kids. So right. now, right. why does he look like this? <laughs> and he's somebody's dad. <laughs> he's not an NFL player. <laughs> so they say. <laughs> so now it becomes, well, I'm going to eat what I want to eat. Like it becomes a, right. like a personal right. indictment right. of like. Right, right. Just because he looks like that doesn't mean that yeah. I, I'm yeah. doing something yeah. wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. no, yeah. man. Yeah. Just by living your life, <laughs> just by standing on stage being in shape, people are like, I don't like you, man. I don't like that. I don't like yeah. that at oh, all. Oh, oh, so you think you make good decisions and I make bad decisions. Okay, okay. Oh, when I talk about, like I got a thing where I say I like cookies more than abs. People are like, really? You really like cookies more than abs? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I, I really do. You. I don't believe you. <laughs> I really I'm do. mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> so it does make me talk about the workout part. And, and then the workout part is a, a big component of my life. So I don't want to be up like, right. yeah, this morning when I was in the gym. So you right, got to right. really like right. finagle and navigate. Yeah. But it's like, but I do feel like once you get them, it does then become something they like. You right. know what I mean? It's like, right, right. because then it's like, oh, it's funny. And they have to guy. know me. They, if they yeah, just yeah, made yeah, a yeah, snap yeah. judgment. Yeah, yeah. But it is funny that you almost are in the negative when you step on stage. <laughs> Like you gotta work up that much extra, yeah. That extra. That's the other thing that I found challenging, especially when I came up in like let's say urban rooms, because I work clean, so I'm not cursing. Yep. I have on a bow tie. Yeah. I. You're coming uh, in hot. I I I mean, like you got three (laughs) things immediately. I hate you, dude. Like, like like the people that like me, like, oh, I like that guy, (laughs) but the the regular, (laughs) the everyday Joe with his Ross T-shirt on is like, hey, man. Why are you trying to make me look bad in front of my wife? <laughs> like, I'm not trying to make you look bad. I don't know you, sir. I don't even know your wife. Dude, I would do shows. I've never forget this show. I played at Auburn, Alabama, at Auburn. And I was on this tiny little stage in this tiny little tent. It was a miserable show. But I remember, you know, I'm playing all these love songs because that's what I write. And every time I would look in the, there was this couple of guys and girl, like they're couples and the guys would put their arms around their wives while I, like just staring at me. And I was like, bro, what? What do you think I'm doing here? Like, those guys hate me. You this know, is like, for you, my man. I'm oh, yeah. I'm like, bro, like, yeah, I'm trying to help you out, man. Come on. But, dude, I mean, it became a joke. Like, every time, like, dude would just be behind his wife, and then I'd turn, he would put his arms around her. And then I'd sort of turn again, he'd let go, and then I'd turn again. It's like, what do you think is... So it's funny, because two things are happening in that moment. The wife is like, I love these songs. The husband's like, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to meet you at your truck, and I'm going to stab you in the neck. Like, stop looking. And I'm like, I'm not looking at you. I'm just looking around the crowd, you know? Oh, man. It's it's like having to work. Okay, a couple more questions for you. One, what do you think the difference between being funny and being a stand up comic is? Yeah, it's similar to what I tell people. One of the most. I, I, it used to be aggravated. It's not aggravated anymore. So if I'm out at an event, mm-hmm. and let's say I'm sitting at a table, and there's somebody at the table that's a known funny person. Yeah. You know, yeah. Say hey. You need to take Earl on the road with you, man. Oh, He's yeah. so funny. And what I tell people Earl. is <laughs> Earl is always funny. Everyone, man. yeah, that's such a good name. <laughs> Everyone can cook. 
but everyone can't open a restaurant. And so that's oh, the difference. Oh, I love that. I love that. That's the difference between being funny and being a, you're like, you're running a restaurant. Like, you're, yeah, you yeah. got a menu. Yeah. Yeah. You got to hire the staff. Man, that's great. Like that you have really a whole good. thing. Like there's a operation that needs to be ran versus right, hey, I'm gonna right. go home and cook my family some food and we're gonna have yeah. we're gonna be nourished. Yeah. We're yeah. gonna go on yeah. and live our life. Yeah. And you know that the other thing too, is it like a restaurant, because this actually plays with your metaphor. You're changing the menu every six months. Yeah. I can't keep serving the same thing. So Earl may be funny, but he's kind of He's kind of one menu fun. That's his thing. That's it. Earl's gonna make you some macaroni and cheese. <laughs> kill it and kill and it. a pork chop. <laughs> but he can't. Yeah, he can't do that for the rest of his life yeah. on the road. Earl yeah. not gonna give you no uh, American fare, and then sometimes <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> do some that's right. seafood. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah Earl not taking chances with the menu. <laughs> He's, He's not like, trying new flavors. <laughs> I got the mac and cheese on lock. I can't leave. He's not switching out the cheddar with mozzarella. No, yeah, man. This, yeah, this yeah, cheddar this cheese exactly. I use. Yeah, this is what I use. That's it. It's <laughs> Velveeta, man. I'm not using pepper jack for it. Come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> think I'm messing up the okay. recipe. So what do you think, like, what's the thing that nobody knows about being a professional comedian or someone who's professionally funny? Like, oh, and there could man. be a bunch of these. But, like, when you think about that, like, what's the thing about being like, oh, wow, that's interesting. Oh, man, that's a great question. I think that um, what people don't know about comedians is we're easy to make laugh. I think people, huh. people think that when they make us laugh, they've accomplished something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that hard to <laughs> make me laugh. <laughs> I love that. We're love the that. most, we give yeah. laughs away. Like, yeah, yeah. I want to laugh. <laughs> I want to laugh. <laughs> I've met people that are like, man, it's hard to make me laugh. Why? Why is it hard <laughs> to make you like, Earl? Why is it hard to make you laugh, Earl? <laughs> Why are you so stingy with the mac and cheese, Why are you Earl? holding on to the mac? <laughs> Give it to the people. Good. It's for the people. <laughs> they don't tax it. They don't, they don't audit it. They don't audit your laughs. <laughs> They're free. Oh. Oh, so much giggling. With fall well underway and winter right around the corner here in Nashville, my family and I really struggle with our sinuses. Lately, I've been loving the Simply Earth Winter Spice Essential Oil Blend. Made of tangerine, fir needle, and balsa fir essential oils. How good does that sound? We use this Simply Earth Blend to help support breathing and energize our living spaces. I swear it clears those tricky sinuses right up and makes your house smell delicious. For months before using Simply Earth, I spent way too much money on expensive essential oils that just sat on my shelf and usually I had no idea what I was doing with them anyway. The Simply Earth Essential Oil Recipe Box will help you gain confidence and clarity in using essential oils to make your home toxin free. Here's how it works. Simply Earth will deliver their special recipe box right to your door, complete with four pure essential oils, six recipe cards, and extras. You can then learn how to use your essential oils while making the recipes created by certified aromatherapists Gosh, I wish that's what my title was. All thanks to Simply Earth's thoughtful guides and knowledge. And last but certainly not least, Simply Earth is here to help you save money and detoxify your life. All of their essential oils are 100% pure and come from the best farms all over the world. Using essential oils to support your wellness doesn't have to be overwhelming. Have fun making your home toxin-free with Simply Earth's Essential Oil Recipe Box. Plus, get a free 80 milliliter diffuser when you subscribe using our URL, simplyearth.com slash dadville. Visit simplyearth.com slash dadville and get started today. You know what's funny? That that really is one of my favorite things about the way that God made me is I I love to laugh, man. I I it just I it makes me so happy. You go, I, I would say this is a little this is gonna sound vain, but I think you'll know what I mean by this. One of the best compliments I've ever been given in my life. Uh, one of my dear friends got him Drew Holcomb, and we had done a bunch of shows together. And Drew is really funny, but he's but he's very. Uh, and Drew would tell you like he's kind of gruff, funny. You know, right, he's kind of right, like right. kind of. And uh, and he on stage, we, we, he said, you know, I'll never forget this because I thought it was so funny. He said, you know, one of the great things about touring with Dave is you just feel funny all the time because he's just so and he laughs and he's he said the bad thing is then you really think you're funny. <laughs> And because he, he would get up on stage and he would try his stuff, it just wouldn't go. And and it was like I just thought that was the I I have laughed about that so much in my life because 
but I, but I feel like you and I are like this way. Like I, I really like being funny, but man, I love to. I just like being around funny people and friends. And to me, laughter is such a communal thing. Like right. I don't want to be the. I don't need to be the funniest guy. I just want to laugh. I, I want everybody to be laughing. Yes, I, I, I would be up. I wouldn't say upset, but like I knew when I left the audience to go on stage. I'm losing a good laugher. Like, yes, yes. I was like, I probably better as a laugher than I am as a comedian. <laughs> like, <laughs> great I'm giving say. love. Like people hear, <laughs> people hear my laugh. People love my laugh. They're like, yeah. oh, I, yeah. He's laughing. I should be laughing. This guy yeah, that's laughing. Right. That's right. Once that's I right. go on stage, I'm like, man, that's a nice. That's a yeah. So let me ask that's this. a blue chip laugh I'm losing. Yeah, right there. <laughs> we're losing our starting, we're starting point yeah, guard. Yeah, that's a, like QB one. <laughs> It's a QB1 laugh when we lose it. Uh, so this is a random question. Does your does your wife think you're funny? She does. She really she does. does. I she love does. that. And she it's laughs nice. at the stuff, like still. Like she'll she's in, like people in the show will watch her. You know, like they oh, watch I, their pastor. Isn't that the best? They'll watch her. Like is she laughing at oh she okay. Yeah. Oh, she's right. Yeah, we're with it. Oh yeah, okay. okay. Like if she likes this stuff, I mean she knows them better yeah, than anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I always love asking that. So, okay, so here's the last question. You can have dinner with three other funny people. And they can oh, be wow. dead or alive. Oh wow! And and Jesus may have been funny. I always say so. You can say Jesus if you want because I imagine he's funny. He's got yeah. to humor up. But you know, three other funny people at dinner. So you and three other people. Who are they? Now I would want to have dinner with Jesus, but not at this conversation. Yeah, that, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, I imagine he is really funny. That's a, that's just an assumption. <laughs> I think Jesus is the funny. How interesting. Can we just digress for a second? What? What if he's really funny? Like, what if like, I just bought the book? There was a book about the uh, personality of Jesus. Who? Because Andy recommended it. I hadn't read it yet, but she was. Mm. That was one of the. They were saying Jesus had a great sense of humor, and you could tell about some of the mm. ways. Oh, in the that way, he yeah, 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 yeah. Communicated yeah. the parable. But how how much is that going to mess me up if I if, if Man, I Jesus roll up and Jesus it. is killing it, just killing it, rocking it, just hold like I, I think he'd be more like us than like the life of the party. I think yeah, like, yeah, 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 like behind he's closed sneaky. doors, he's like Jesus, he's an assassin. Jesus is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Think about that as a statement. Like someday on the, on the new heavens, new earth, above bumping you. Like, dude, Jesus Man. started riffing about goats last dude, night. Like, just the horns. My ain't my wings were hurting. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> oh my god! My I dropped my hurting. halo, man. My, <laughs> my back halo. got cold. Remember how our back got cold on Earth? My back got cold. I almost blacked out. <laughs> Dude, I gotta tell you this story, man. This it, it, I'm, I don't know how much time we got. I, I, I will listen to any story. Tell me, tell me. This is not a good story, but it's a good story. It's not good, but it's good. It's so. I, so oh, I gotta set it up, man. So there's, there's this comedian, uh, Spanky Brown, who was a road comic, kind of yep. one of my first yep. friends in comedy. Yep. A mentor of mine died, died on the road, mm. and uh, this has been a few years ago. So. One of the bookers at the club here, with you know, that's how I got on the club in Columbia. Spanky brought me in as a oh, wow, as a, as wow. his feature. You know, I wow. had not even been doing clubs. He brought me in as feature. So when I did the America's Got Talent, the booker that you know know my relationship with Spanky sent me a thing. He was like, "Hey man, I wish Spanky was alive to see you oh, on wow. America's Got Talent." Right mm. now, the person would be like, "Oh, that's nice, comedian." I was like. I just wish Spanky was alive. Like I don't like <laughs> so so I, so that's the story. I'm telling that story to another another comedian one day. I'm, I'm driving, you know, I got the earplugs on. I'm driving down the highway and I'm telling him this. I'm like, dude, let me tell you this story. And when I and, and it was so funny, like when when I was explaining to him, I'm like, man, Spanky, my dude, man, I wish he would have been here. And then this guy talking about he wish he would have been here to see me on America that time. I was like, shoot. I wish Spanky was alive just to be here, right? And so yeah. when I said it, I laughed so hard. I I went blind. I literally, I'm driving. <laughs> I, it's, I'm probably 75 miles an hour on the interstate talking to my buddy. I laughed so hard. I momentarily was blinded. I blacked out like in terms of like, oh I could not see. Gosh. And I'm like, dude. I can't see, like, at least for three seconds. Like, oh my I was. Oh, gosh. And I was like, dude. And I, like, came to, like, I didn't pass out or anything, but it's like I've gotten lightheaded laughing before, <laughs> but I've never, never blacked lost out. my sight. 
<laughs> Can you imagine if you were on stage and that happened? Everybody's like, what's wrong with him? And you're just kind of staring I just would be like, oh, hey, hey, guys, <laughs> hey. Like, I, and I was like, I couldn't. I'm driving on the interstate. <laughs> that is amazing. And it what was absolutely incredible. There were like barriers that were close to the thing. But where I was at, it was more open. So like if I would have did that 20 oh, minutes yeah. earlier, I yeah, would have yeah. like slammed into the thing. But you, what, you get to I heaven was, and Jesus is like. <laughs> Mike, just to, I want to run. We're going to let you in, but I just want to say something real quick. We've had a lot of people up here. I mean, a lot of people have died. It's been, you know, we've never, ever. Peter, double check me on this. In yeah, no, he's right. Yeah. No one has died laughing at themselves. Um, so that's a first. That's a first. So we're going to start in a new neighborhood up there. Um, hey, have you seen The Good Place, that, that TV oh, yeah. show? Oh, yeah. 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 That's where I need to go on. You think it's heaven, but it's not. I want to go to The Good Place. Yeah. There's there's nothing more arrogant than we can think of of someone dying Just laughing at that. Laughing them. at his own joke. <laughs> it's like. I blacked out laughing at me. I knew the that, punchline. <laughs> Hold on. Can I, say, can I say that sentence again? I blacked out laughing at me. At me. <laughs> How arrogant of an individual. <laughs> Look, Jesus loves you, but you knew he was shaking his head. He was like, oof, that's yep. rough, man. I thought he got through that. I thought he got through that pride. <laughs> that is rough. That is rough. There's this callback right there. That's that pride we're doing. Um, okay, so you got three people. You All got right. three people. You got it, shameful Jesus could be there if you want to. Just yeah, judging. yeah. He's <laughs> not going to have me after that, after he saw me. <laughs> he ain't coming. He's not taking the invitation. He's not <laughs> Jesus is like, <laughs> nah, oh we'll see him later. <laughs> oh, my God. I think. <laughs> So I'm going with Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac oh. is my all-time oh, Bernie. favorite. Like, good night, that guy. Bernie Mac is hands down one of the one of my favorites. I would say Bernie Mac, Dave Chappelle. I'm in a. I'm in a. I'm, I would. I'm between George Carlin and Chris Rock. So those are the two mm. that I would mm. have. And mm. I'll probably go George Carlin because he's not here anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. That's a good. That's a good lineup. That'd be a really funny, that'd be a funny dinner, man. man. I'm like, could you imagine? Man. The Bernie Mac in and of itself, because the thing that's most impressive about me, about Bernie to me is he was older. Hmm. Like, there's no young Bernie Mac comedy tapes out there. Like, what Bernie was he was doing like, then? Do you know? He was kind of doing what, I, you know, I feel like I'm doing, like, doing it, but it wasn't underneath the lights. Like, he was in Chicago doing his thing. He was traveling. He was a club guy, but he just wasn't a household name. Hmm. And people knew. They knew that, like, man, this guy's amazing. I think, I mean, you know, if you look, Bernie had an HBO special years before the Bernie Mac show and hmm. uh, the Kings of Comedy. It just didn't work. You know, it just wasn't yeah. the time. God, that Kings of Comedy. Oh. I think I TT'd in my pants. Dave, I was in college. I laid on. I watched this in the movie theater. I laid on the floor in the movie. It theater. is. It is. That is the worst floor to lay on. There's not a worse floor <laughs> to physically put your body on than a movie oh theater gosh. floor. That's. Do you know? Do you know the other thing I think I did that caused me to do that is in in Dumb and Dumber. This is the hardest I've laughed in a movie theater, and not the part because everybody thinks it's the toilet scene, which was hysterical. <laughs> but when he is shooting the ketchup up and he's trying to hit his mouth when he's eating the i i don't know what it was man i i couldn't get it together i remember i think i sat on the floor in the theater laughing like i could not get it together like my body was like sorry bro this I'm is out. just how is that, that that whole bit i mean th there are so many parts at kings of comedy but when when he starts talking about if one person started running i i i i don't know at that point in my life if i had laughed that hard I mean, his other thing. Oh. I could at some point years ago, I could talk like Bernie. Like I, so people would like have me oh, on the get phone you to do it. Oh. talking to that. I would do it. I, I, that was. I mean, I'm not an impressionist guy. I, they'll probably if I if I focus and play pay some time doing it, I could maybe create yeah, some yeah. voices. But yeah, I loved Bernie Mac, man. Well, th do this. Tell tell the people what you got out. They need to see what's going on with you. So y'all can check me out, man. One of the things that would be a big help to me if you go to Amazon Prime Video. And watch. What you're not gonna do is not laugh at these jokes. No, you don't have to watch it. Just go and no, review. Do, no, you get no. You get. Listen, people, <laughs> watch it. Watch it. But if you don't if watch you it, laughing by now. Just sometimes. go and review it. Just give me five stars, and we'll call it even. If you don't watch it, just, just do it. <laughs> that's right. That's <laughs> just, right. 
But yeah, if you can go see that and tell people about it and and, and review it. And what's your website? I'm at comedianmikegoodwin.com. I just recently bought mikegoodwin.com, and I'm very embarrassed for how much money I spent on that uh, website. <laughs> it was like a guy, what, like oh, a lawyer? Oh, or something. Like some guy I, was like a dentist. Some guy was just like, hey, man, he mo- he didn't even have it. He sent it to like a brokering group. They were like, oh. So there was no negotiations. It was just like, hey, this is the price. If you want it, <laughs> you just click and start oh, crying. Oh, my God. That's know, my name. Man. Get my yeah. name. <laughs> You ain't doing that with my name. It's my name. <laughs> my gosh. I got to buy my name. I, <laughs> it's just, this feels really wrong. This song, it's and a, it's not being used. The last uh, time I, the guy was a realtor, and I kind of was watching it for a while, and then he's, I guess he stopped selling real estate at some point. But he, but he sold that site. He said, uh, he said, uh, he sold that. <laughs> he's done that real estate. He's done that. Yeah, that real estate. That digital, uh, that digital re- <laughs> real estate. <laughs> I still you, have properties out here. Oh my gosh, you're a legend, and obviously you make. I don't know that I've ever laughed this hard in a podcast. Like I'm gonna listen back to this and be so annoyed at myself the whole time, just laughing. I, I, my, my bad, man. My bad. Thank you so much for this. You no know, man, man, thanks for having me, man. This is so yes. much fun. And thank you all for listening to It's Hard Being an Idiot podcast. And make sure to check out my stand-up comedy album called It's Hard Being an Idiot everywhere you listen to music and comedy. Mm-hmm.